Hello, this is Carrie Fell. Welcome to my studio. So I really feel like dyeing something today and I'm going to challenge myself. So this is my uh, dyeing games box and I have every color that I own in acid dyes in here and I'm going to draw I think four out of here and use those colors. No matter what they are, I'm going to figure out a way to somehow make them work on the yarn. I'm going to dye a skein of Briggs and Little Heritage and this is the wool that I use for making my mug rugs. So that skein is going to go in the pot or the pan and then I have a uh, warp, two warps, uh, one lace and one fingering weight superwash wool which uh, I'll put in uh, my shop. Hopefully they turn out beautifully. So I'm going to draw some colors without looking. I'm not looking. I'm looking the other way and my hands are just going by feel here. And the colors are wine rose. Key Lime. This sounds familiar. I think I've dyed something of these colors before. Black. Oh, interesting. Okay. Maple Sugar. All right. So those are four colors. We've got a, a brown, a lime green, a rose color, and a black. So I'm already getting some ideas. I think I'd like to speckle with the black. But other than speckling with black, I'm not quite sure how to apply these colors. So I'm going to give that a little think right now. All right, I've decided to uh, make it relatively easy on myself. The key lime and the wine rose, I have them both uh, mixed into a stock solution already and so rather than uh, complicate things I'm just going to use what I have right here. Uh, it was They've both been mixed up for quite a while so hopefully the color will still be true. If not, it's what I get. So uh, yes, we've got those two in liquid form. Maple sugar is a, a brand new color for me. I have never used it. Um, I purchased it not too long ago and it is the one color that I have never used and so that will be fun. So I'm going to be putting that on as a dry powder and then I have the black and I think I will uh, add citric acid to it and just sprinkle it lightly maybe just on one or two parts of the yarn. So the Yarn's been soaking in water that has citric acid on it, or in it, I mean. So there's a good amount of acid already in this yarn. That's the uh, fingering warp. This is the skein. of Briggs and Little Heritage. Okay. Yeah, this is the lace warp. So the two warps are super wash. The Heritage skein is not a super wash. So there's not much uh, water in here right now. But I'm going to up that. And the first thing I'm going to do is add the wine rose and the key lime uh, in liquid form. So I've filled up two measuring cups with one cup of the water that has the citric acid in it. And then I'm going to add the stock solution to that. 
and I added three tablespoons of the wine rose because it is uh, not a very intense color at all. See, there's some sediment in that. The key lime is a very intense color, so I'm just going to add two tablespoons right now and then see what that looks like. And there's sediment in this as well. Colors traveling. So I'm going to turn on the heat and get get this to set already. So I'm putting it on medium. And I'll just let this absorb some color. before flipping it and possibly adding color on the other side. It's already striking to the superwash. Oh, interesting. This is maple sugar, which I assume would be a light brown sort of color. And it looks very much like a gray blue in the, in the powder form. Interesting. I considered putting it into solution, but I think I'm just going to sprinkle it. Oh, and we can see where it's hitting heat, it's turning brown right away. So, very cool. And I don't know how long it's going to take to, to uh, hit. that one. I am going to poke because I don't necessarily need this really speckly. I'm going to flip this because even though uh, it hasn't been heated all the way through, I would like to add some color on the back side um, before before it gets any hotter. Ooh, look at that lime. I'm not surprised that the lime is uh, slow to enter the yarn. And look at how the, oh, look at how it struck on the superwash, leaving lots of white. 
And that's why I wanted to do some flipping also because I want to add color um, to raise the water level a little bit uh, so the yarn doesn't burn. I'm going to mix up some more of the liquid from stock. So these stock solutions are pretty strong. They're about a two and a half percent off the bat. Um, a lot of people make a 1% stock solution. I made a 2 so it would last longer. Um, so I always cut it with quite a bit of water when I go to use it. I'm going to not automatically make a stock solution every time I get a new color now because I'm finding it uh, uh, start separating in the jars, uh, creating sediments, um, even, you know, rusting. Let me show you the lid. This is the key lime. It might have been an old jar, this one. Let me just see. Yeah, so this is one of my older jars, and it's pretty gross. I'll be using a new lid after this. But I probably won't uh, make stock solutions to, um, to sit around for as long as I have in the past. So the mask is going to go back on as I apply the maple sugar in its powder form. A little happier with the water level now so I can let it sit and, and steam for a bit. I'm going to flip it again. some light areas but I kind of like them they're not white they're just paler uh, there's some area in here that looks white so I'll be adding more lime green down there And a little bit of white down here. So some lime green there. And then this big 
one. Does not look like it has any white, which does not surprise me because it is not super washed, so the the dye will spread through it more slowly and reach everything. So a little more lime green in those two spots. I like the pale areas of the pink. Oops, I forgot to turn the camera on. I sprinkled a little bit more maple sugar on. And now I'm going to mix up some of the black um, with citric acid to dilute it a little bit and then I'll do some sprinkling. So we can see that it's uh, mostly citric acid and very little uh, black dye powder in there. So I'm hoping that those sprinkles will be um, spread out nicely. I don't know if um, black breaks or not. This is jet black. so. Here we go. So I'm going to give that a moment or two to see how many speckles appear. Not much here. You know that speckles appear on superwash better than non-superwash. So maybe that's what I'm seeing here. So I'll wait a few minutes and then I'll flip it and add more of these. So I'm flipping and sprinkling a few more times. So I flipped and sprinkled quite a number of times and uh, I've used up all the, the uh, black dye that I had allocated for that. So now I'm just going to add a little bit more liquid. This is the water that was in the uh, bath that the skeins originally soaked in.
So I'm just wanting to raise the water level a bit. Don't want to dissolve any of the powder that might be sitting on the surface of the yarn. So I'm trying to pour it into the empty, into empty spaces. I don't want the uh, black uh, sprinkles to go into the water. And dye the yarn black or gray. I want it to stay as specks on the surface of the yarn. So I'm going to raise the heat, let it uh, boil and steam for another 10 or 15 minutes. Then I'll uh, turn the heat off and let it cool down in the pan. Well, it looks like it's cooled down. It is lukewarm. And the water looks clear, I think. I have a stained pan, so sometimes it's hard to tell. But I'm going to remove it from the pan. I have another uh, project I want to dye. Okay, so not too many speckles. There's still lots of areas where there aren't many. So I was wondering if I was adding too many. I haven't done much speckling. Um, speckling works well on superwash, and I haven't used much in the way of superwash yarns. But uh, I will be in the future. I have some large cones of superwash that I will be making warps with. And as expected, this doesn't look very speckly. Uh, this is not a superwash yarn, so the uh, speckles don't um, don't strike. As soon as I hit the yarn, they move around and um, kind of blur. So I just have what looks like almost dirty spots on there. But I'm hoping that will just give the the yarn some depth in the areas where the black speckles were. So I'm going to go rinse these out in the sink and hang them to dry and then we'll take another look when they're dry. So here's everything all dry, still laid out in the way that I dyed it. I'll rearrange that in a minute. What we see here are three different types of yarn and how the dye has applied itself differently to each one. This one here closest to the camera is the Briggs and Little. It's the heritage yarn and it's 100% wool that uh, is not treated. It's not superwash. And so what happens is the black specks that I added are softer. So they dissolve and spread slightly before adhering to the yarn. So we have these soft little touches of dark areas on the skein. The next two are superwash yarns. And this one here is the lace weight and this is the fingering weight. And you can see how the speckles uh, are sharp and they adhered immediately as soon as they hit the yarn. So I'm going to take off all the ties and the and the tags and everything and uh, chain them up into warp chains and we'll take another look. Oh, just before I do that, we'll see that the there's the way the color repeat happens is that it's red and then it goes to brown, green, brown, and then back to red again. 
and that happened on both of these warp chains and of course this is a skein so it's it's in the round like this but let me rearrange these and we'll take another look so here's the two superwash yarn warp chains this is the fingering weight and this is the lace weight when it's chained this way you can still see the color progression as it moves from red to green and back again a couple of times so the two ends of the warp are the same and the same as the center so it's a, a nice balanced uh, colored warp and there's 150 ends of the lace and 100 ends of the fingering and I figure if they're set at say 10 and 15 then you get a, a 10 inch wide warp which is perfect for a scarf of course those aren't necessarily the sets you would use it all depends on the structure so your your uh, scarf could be a little narrower than that if you went to say a twill I really like the color scheme I never would have thought to put the lime and the uh, the boysenberry together like this it's quite bright and it works I'm really happy with uh, and then you know with the sort of brownish in between two to help blend it it just worked out perfectly and I'm really happy and uh, the little specks of black add some interest to it as well so yeah I I think this uh, was quite a successful um, dying games project here we have the uh, this game of uh, Briggs and Little and this is what I'll use to make uh, some more uh, mug rugs and there'll be a repeating colorway happening in a striped uh, sort of pattern along with the mug rugs and with some nice interests with the little dark areas. So I'm really happy with how this skein of yarn worked out too. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe and check out my Patreon page if you're interested in continuing to support me as I do these yarn experiments and dyeing experiments, weaving. Thank you for coming along with me on these dyeing games. Thank you for watching.